more bad news is coming from the front lines for the Ukrainians. So let's start. And today we'll start from the Kharkiv area. This is the area where Ukrainians had very effective offensive operations towards the Russian border and they pushed the Russians and they managed and they forced them to retreat. And today we have two towns, Chernova and Rubizhne, where the heaviest clashes are. Uh, a few days ago I told you that the Russians managed establish, to establish control over these towns. But as I can see from the West Sources map and from the Russian Sources map, neither West Sources map nor the Russian Sources map update this map. So we can say that these towns, Chernobyl and Rubizhne, is in the gray zone. So we can say that in the morning the Russians established control over this town, but by the evening the Ukrainians established control over this town. So there are very heavy clashes and uh, we'll see what's next. Now let's move towards the Izum area. This is the area. And the front line here is pretty calm. No movements towards any direction. This is the Izum area. Izum area is located on the north from the Slavansk and Karmatsk, the heart of the Donbass Arc operation. This is the Izum area. But one important thing, one important update I got today. According to the West intelligence, there are around 20,000 of, of the Russian soldiers in this area. So in this area, exactly in the zoom, in, on this bridgehead, there are around 20,000 of the Russian soldiers. It's about 225 BTG. And these guy, guys are ready, are ready for very big offensive operation towards Barvinka, towards Slavensk and Kramatorsk. These troops these forces, these 25 BTG, are waiting for the outcome of the operation near Liman. This is Liman. And now let's talk about this area and about the progress, about the Russian progress in this area. As you know, yesterday the Russians started their offensive operation, their storm operation over Liman. And today we got more news, more updates about their progress. First of all, we must say that this area is under the Russian control. And this is very important because yet, uh, a few days ago the Russians established control over the town Drobyshova and they cut this area, this Liman area, in two parts, as you can see. And they control this territory totally. Yesterday they started the storm operation and as you can see the West Sources map update their map so we they are saying that the Russians control just the northwest part of town Liman. This is the territory that, according to the West sources, is under the Russians. But by the evening of the local time, I got the news that the main, the main clashes in this area are near this lake, this blue lake, it calls like that, blue lake, and over this small village Shudreve. So we can say that the Russians established control over this part of the town, north part of the town, and this triangle, this road triangle. So this is the progress and this is the area that under the Russians control. The Ukrainians control just the area near the railroad station. This is a very powerful fortified area and it is, the, it is very difficult, it is very easy to protect this area. Of course everything is in comparison but it's easy to control this area. There are very heavy clashes near the Blue, blue Lake. So Ukrainians they are retreating towards Blue Lake in direction towards Shudreve. So this is like this is the road. This is the way how they are trying to retreat towards Shudreve. And as I understand, there is bridges here, some pontoon bridges in this forest. We can take a look at this map for better understanding. This is our Liman and this is our Shudreve. So I think that there is some pontoon bridges in this area that were established by Ukrainians to give possibility for the Ukrainians that located in Liman to cross the river and to retreat towards their positions. So the heavy clashes here is here, near these lakes and near Shudrochevi. Ukrainians, they're leaving this territory. And the Russians control this area. So the forces that located in Izum, they're waiting for the outcome of this operation. As soon as the Russians establish control over entire bridgehead on this side of the 
Liman area, the Zoom forces will start their offensive operation towards Slavyansk, towards Barvinkeve, and towards Grushuvaha. But for now they can't do this because Liman area is like in the back and they don't want to have any attack in the back while doing all this operation. So that's it about Liman area. Now let's move to the Severodonetsk. Every day they're trying to storm this area. Every day they do some attempts to assault this area. But for now we can say that there are just heavy clashes on the edge of Severodonetsk. According to this map, we can say that the Russians are fighting on the forest, but the Russian sources saying that they managed to establish control over the suburbs of the Severodonetsk, something like this, and that they managed to establish control over this area. So they're like in the suburbs of Severodonetsk, that their blocks, that these blocks is under the Russians, and that they're trying to push Ukrainians from the middle part, central part of Severodonetsk. More than that, we know that the Russians they're attacking towards Sirotinia, but I can't tell you about the territory that is under the Russian control. From now on, I don't have any information about that. Now let's move to our Zolotoya Girskia cauldron. For now, it's not a cauldron, but there are a few important updates in, on this territory. First of all, uh, one of the most interesting update is about Toshkovka and town by the name Ustinovka. This is the town. If you remember a few days ago, I told you that uh, the Russians established control over the Toshkovka, but the West Sources map don't want to update this information. But for now, it's not important um, because the Russians are fighting near Ustinovka. So, if you remember, I told you that as soon as Russians are able to establish control over Tashkovka, and according to the Russian sources map, they did that, they will be able to open a small tunnel between Tashkovka and Seversky Donetsk River. This is the tunnel. And as soon as they do this, they will be able to make their offensive operation towards Kolokolova and Ustinovka. And according to the West sources map, and according to the report, official military report, uh, Ukrainian official military report, we know that there are heavy clashes near Rustinovka and today, this evening or maybe tomorrow in the morning, this uh, town is going to fall and the Russians will establish control over this town. And this is a very important town because of one many reasons and one of them is that this town opened uh, the door for the Russians to cross the Seversky Donetsk River and then to move along this forest and this force is a very nice native defense line for the Russians and they will be able to attack Barivsky in the back. More than that, they will be able to attack Bilogora from this area. And if they are able to attack Bilogora, and the main idea of attacking this Bilogora is just to suppress the, Ru the Ukrainian forces in this area. This is a small hill. Uh, for example, the area near Bilogora, it's like, uh, if we translate in English, it's like white rock. So it's like the hill, and it's a very nice position. From this position, you can control uh, the east, southeast part of Lysychansk agglomeration. This is the agglomeration, this is the Bilogora, and from this area, you can control Barivsky, Ustinovka, uh, Tashkovka, so it's like on the hill. So that's why using this forest, the Russians will be able to come as much as closer to this town, and from this river, they will be able at least to suppress the artillery position or eye position on this hill. More than that, they will be able to attack Barivsky from the back. So Istinova and the bridgehead over in Istinova is very important and we can say that it's a key region uh, that can open the door towards the Lysychansk agglomeration. But let's return to our Tashkovka. This is the update regarding Tashkovka. We know about the Arekhova, the same situation you see the map has updated, but as far as I see the Russians stopped their offensive operation, at least there is no more news about that. The only thing that they control this cross and they control this road, more than that, the guys from Tashkovka also control this road. So the, the total fire control, they're just three kilometers and it's a very nice position to attack any convoy in this area, any Ukrainian troops in this area. 
another important update that we discussed yesterday that the Russians established control over this triangle, over these suburbs of Zlatoya. And today we got the news that the Russians start their offensive operation towards Zlatoya number three. It's like a small blocks in this in this small agglomeration. And according to the Russian sources, they established control over this Zlatoya number three. This is a small village or maybe some place where people have some their private houses and so on. So this is the situation about the Zolotoya Gorsky agglomeration. Now let's talk about the north of our Popasna flower. As you can see the West Sources map, they update some information, they add some information, but some information they're not trying to add, maybe because of the fact that some towns in this area uh, is under the Russian control not like entire towns but the part of those towns but I think that we need to understand the, even if the Russian controls a half of the town it's also very important we discussed the town Komishovaha this is a very big town you see these great dots it's like a border of this town so this town consists of two parts the, we the west part is like railway part and the east part is like a field part so the Russians established control over town Viktorovka and over the west part of Kamishovaha, the part where the railroad located. So this is the area where the Russians controls. And from this area, the Russians attacks in, uh, in two directions, in towards Vrubivka and towards Lipova. More than that, more than that. Uh, some sources said that Lipova has fallen and that the Russians established control over Lipova. If we take a look at the Russian sources map, we can see that Today they established control over town Vasilivka. This is Vasilivka. That the Lipova is in the gray zone according to their map. You see that they're saying that they're controlling half of Kamushovaha. This is the railway part of this Kamushovaha. This is attack towards Zolotoya number three. And important update about this the north of our Papasna flower. I got very interesting map. This is the West Sources map. And this is the map from Neil Hauer, and he says that the Russians established control over Vasilivka, but this information has confirmation on the both maps, on the Russian sources map, the same thing we can see on the West sources map, this Vasilivka. Also, he says that the Russian established control over town Yakovlevka. This is the Yakovlevka. I didn't got any confirmation of this information on other side, on, from other sources. But this is the guy who who is fighting on the Ukrainian side, and he locates in this area. So I think that he knows what he's saying. So let's update this map according to this information. More than that, we know that the Russians established control over Vladimirovka, and let's take a look on this his map. Does he say something like this? Yes, Vladimirovka is also under Russian control according to his map as well. This is Vladimirovka. So let's update this territory according to West Sources information, not like West Sources map, but one of the person who is located there. So this is the territory that is under the Russian control. So we can say that the Russians not just established the fire control over the road of life, this gray line that leads from Bakhmut towards Lysychansk is the road of life. We can say that the Russians not just established fire control over this road, this is the road, but they managed to take control over the town Yakovlevka. And this is the very big bad situation for the Ukrainians. And uh, that means that the Russians not just established control over the road, but more than that, they established fire control over the northwest of Solidar and over this railroad. So just 8 kilometers and now the Russian artillery can get this railroad and that's mean that the Ukrainians has a lot of problems with the railroad support as well. So we can say that entire area Lysychansk agglomeration is in, under the operational encirclement. I'm talking about the entire Lysychansk area. More than that, as far as I understand, the Russian attacking from Vasilivka towards Lipova this area from both two sides and also they're trying to attack Bilogorovka. There are two Bilogorovka in this area. One Bilogorovka is a bridgehead on this side of the Seversky Donetsk River. This is the territory where the Russians had a lot of losses and another Bilogorovka is here near the Solidar and near the Bakhmut. This is the Bilogorovka. And the Russians are trying to establish control over this territory as well. The reason 
Uh, and they can do this very easily, first of all, because of the fact that the Yakov is under the Russians. And that means that Ukrainians, they can't send their reinforcement from Solidar towards Belogorovka. And the only forces they can use is the forces from the Lysychansk. But we know that there are very big lack of forces in manpower in Lysychansk. And there is no like free hands in this area. So that's why the forces in Belogorovka, they should count on them, themselves. And they, they shouldn't wait for, and expect for some for help in this area. And and that's mean that in a day or maybe in a two, these forces will be forced to retreat from their position towards the north. And take a look at this map. And this is a very important update. Let's count towns in this area. Bilogorovka, Beristova, Mikolaevka, Vrubivka, Mirkova. This is a very small villages. If we take a look at this map, for example, this is the Bilogorovka. I think we can say that something like Bilogorovka. But if we take a look at this map, you see there's just one street, like maybe 10, maybe 20 houses in this area, 20 buildings. It's nothing. There is no position for Ukrainians to hold this land. There is no position. Um, they can hold this land just for their lives. So if you don't care about your life, you can hold this position for another hour. But if the Russians cover this area ter territory with their artillery or with the records, we can say that these guys are done. So there is no way to hold this area. And the nearest position where the Ukrainians can establish their fortified area, their castle, is the Lysychansk oil refinery. And as you can see, it's very far from the front line. So if the Russians are able to ru ruin the defense area, Ukrainian defense area in this on this territory, they with this action they will force Ukrainians to retreat towards Lysychansk oil refinery, and all this area will be another flower because there would be no any even native barrier to stop the Russians. See, there is no rivers, there is no towns, there is no forest, there is no villages, there is nothing. So as soon as Russians establish control over this territory, they will be able to push Ukrainians till Lysychansk oil refinery. So from this area towards this area. And if the Russians can establish control or block this oil refinery, because it's a very big plant, and by the way, the Russians are bombing this area very often. They bomb this territory very often. On I, I remember about three bombings. And what are they trying to do? First of all, they're trying to bomb oil, the, every fuels, uh, warehouses in this area. But more than that, they want to clear this territory. Because we know that if the Russians attack this area and will start their offensive operation, they need to be sure that there is no fuel in this area. Because <clears throat> imagine yourself if the Russians attack, establish control over this territory and then the Ukrainians start to attack this territory with their point U rockets. It will be not very comfortable for the Russians to stay in this area. So that's why they want to destroy all the fuels in this area just to make sure that there would be no danger for their troops to establish control over this territory. And we can say that as soon as Russians establish control over this refinery, we can say about the blockade of Lysychansk agglomeration. But it's not the operation of tomorrow or maybe the, the day after tomorrow. It's like a week or maybe a week, a, half, a week and a half before we see this. But I'm sure that we're going to see this operation. But some sources, some Russian sources, says that the Russians are planning to attack towards Bakhmut. I'm not sure about stretching the front line because we see that there is a very big chance to encircle and to complete these talks about Lysychansk agglomeration. They can encircle this area and after that they can do whatever they like. They can stay on their position, they can push towards the Bakhmut and so on, but we'll see what's next. Uh, another update we can see from the West Sources map about this area. If you remember, uh, it was yesterday, the entire front line has collapsed. This Yesterday, all this territory from this area where I'm pointing with my mouse towards the Svitlodarsk was under the Ukrainians. And less than one day, entire front line collapsed and the, and the Ukrainians were forced to leave this area to retreat towards the Bakhmut 
is one direction and another direction towards this refinery, this plant, sorry. And this also is some not big, small industrial zone, but the Ukraine has their fortified area here. And I think that they're going to leave this plant as well, but for now they're keeping their forces there for just for one reason, reason to make the retreating of main Ukrainian forces more safe. So they have their fire position there, they're checking, they're controlling and spotting the Russians in this area and they're trying not to allow them to make their offensive operation very fast and very aggressive. More than that, this map is not updated because before I start making this video I got information that the Russians established control over this area as well, over the town Roti and Vidrajenya. So we can say that the Russians control this territory. So this is the picture of our Papasana flower. And we can say that the front line um, maybe is not collapsing because you see this road, this river. This is the territory according to the uh, US intelligence and the British intelligence. They're saying and they're suggesting Ukrainians to retreat from this position towards this river. This is the uh, position of West intelligence and West advisors. They're saying like this. It's not something that Ukrainian uh, front line is collapsing. But everybody understand that it's impossible to hold this area. And sooner or later, the Russians will establish control over entire Lysychansk agglomeration, Gorsky Zolotoy agglomeration, this area. So it's very good position to retreat to retreat on this side of this river and this is the river and the, and this is the Bakhmutka this river has the name Bakhmutka so Ukrainians are retreating on their side of this river so they want according to the advices they're receiving they want to establish the front line somewhere here so this area will be taken by the Russians sooner or later in a day in a month or in a weeks I don't know but this is the plan and after that, the Russians will start their operation on this river. But don't forget about Liman area and don't forget about Izum, where 25 BTG are waiting for their time. Because we understand if the Ukrainians start retreating toward this river, and as soon as this area will be cleared, the Russians will start this operation. And we can say that the heart of Donbas arc operation will, will appear between two fires, between two lines. But I think that we will see this picture not earlier than the middle of June. But who knows? How, who knows how long Ukrainians are able to fight for their lands? Now let's move towards the Avdeevka. Another important update we got from Avdeevka: the Russian forces that located in this small bag are moving around Avdeevka. This is Avdeevka. This is Avdeevka. This Avdiivka is located on the south from the Kramatorsk and Slavyansk heart. This Avdiivka, this is a very fortified and powerful place. There are a lot of Ukrainian soldiers. According to the latest update I, I got, there are around five to eight thousand of Ukrainians in this area. More than that, according to talks, it's not like official position. We didn't get evidence about this. But some sources are saying that there are also two Polish battalions exactly in this area. So if they are in the Donbas, they are located in Avdiivka. And if the Russians started their offensive and encirclement operation around Avdiivka, sooner or later we will understand if there are any Polish battalions there. So the Russians are not planning to attack Avdiivka in front. It's a suicide operation. Today we heard a report from the Donetsk People's Republic uh, military authority. He told that the Russians are moving, are trying to encircle. So, by this evening, the Russians established control something like this, this small territory, and they're moving towards Stepnoe, Stepove. After that, they will move toward Berdichi, Semyonovka, Orlevka, Tantoninke, Severnye, from Tonninke, Lastochke. So, this is the Russian plan. They want to encircle this group. They have already cut this area from this road that leads toward the Bakhmut. 
Konstantinovka. They have already established control over the railroad. And the only road that these guys have is this small local road. It's a road of very bad quality. And this road leads toward this area. So for now they still have possibility to retrieve and leave this position. But I'm not sure that they have real possibility of doing this. First of all, they won't be able to leave Avdiivka using the convoys because this territory is totally under under the Russian fire. You see that they from Spartak, from Donetsk, they can cover this area with heavy bombing. So they, and it's like fields and uh, using the drones, you can control entire territory. So that's why it will be very easy, difficult for soldiers from Avdiivka to leave this this position. But we'll see what's next in this area as well. There is no updates from this area. This is the Kurahova area, Kurahova fortified area. Kurahova is located on the south uh, west from Avdiivka cauldron. This is Kurahova. No updates. The Russians are trying to push Ukrainians from Marinka, but no result. They're trying to establish control over Novo Mikhailovka, but for now there is no result. They're trying to storm Ugledar, but there is no result in this situation as well. And the same thing with Velika Novosilovka. They can't establish control over Velika Novosilovka. The only difference with the Russian sources map, this is the Russian sources map, that Ukrainians, that the Russians, sorry, establish control over the town Niskuchne. It's like suburbs of Velika Novosilovka. And it's very important suburbs because these suburbs open the road, the way towards Velika Novosilovka. No updates. In Orechov Gulay Polya area, no updates in Krivoyri, just the local battles between artillery duels. And we have some updates from our Odessa area. The Russian intelligence said that the Ukrainians start collect their Bayraktars in this area again. They moved some paratroopers, some marines in this area, and as far as I understand, they are planning to start the um, Zmiyini battle episode number three. So we'll see what's next. We'll see what's next. We know that the British, the England, sent some rockets, some missiles to Ukrainians, and the Ukrainians want to use these missiles against ships, Russian ships in this area. They need to deblocate this island, and with help of that, they will be able to start moving their their trade ships towards the world, towards the entire planet. And that's it for today.